Optimization problems are a pretty interesting part of calculus. I like them because they're a good application or a good example of an application that the stuff you're learning in calculus, differential calculus specifically, how that can actually be used in a real world situation. In this example specifically, we're gonna be going over how you could price tickets of a sporting event in order to maximize your revenue. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to find the demand function in this type of a problem. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the example. So let's go ahead and just jump on into this question here. We have a baseball team that plays in a stadium that holds 55,000 spectators with ticket prices at $10. The average attendance has been 27,000. When ticket prices were lowered to $8, the average attendance rose to 33,000. So there's gonna be two parts to this question. First of all, part A is going to be to find the demand function, assuming that it's linear. So this is a good example of what it looks like to have to find the demand function um, you know, which of course we're going to then use to optimize or to maximize revenue. Uh, but finding the demand function is kind of the first step in that. So when you're trying to find a demand function, what you want to keep in mind is first of all, what a demand function is. So a demand function is always going to be some function, which is usually going to be a function of the price that you're selling, uh, your product or service for, in this case, the price that we're selling a ticket for. Um, so it's going to be a function of price, F of P. And usually what you want that to give you, or I guess what you need it to give you in order for it to be a demand function, is the number of those things you sell. So in this case, we need that to, to give us the number of tickets we sell, which usually is going to be represented with the letter Q for quantity. So typically a demand function is going to be some function of price that gives us the quantity that we're going to sell. So that's kind of what we want to keep in mind as we're working through this problem and other problems like this is price of our ticket is going to be the input of this function and quantity of tickets sold is going to be the output. So since we can assume this is linear, we want to kind of think about the information that this problem is giving us. And in this problem, it tells us if the ticket price is a certain number, how many tickets are we going to sell? Of course, it's on average, but we can we can just kind of go based on this number. And then when we change the ticket price to a different price, how many tickets are we going to sell? So basically what this problem specifically is telling us is two different input output pairs, two different price quantity pairs. So to figure out the demand function, since we can assume it's linear, we know that it goes through these two points where we have a price of 10 selling 55,000 tickets. And then when we have a price of eight, we sell, or I'm sorry, we don't sell 55,000 tickets. That's the total amount that can fit in this stadium. When the tickets are $10, we sell 27,000 tickets. And when the price is then changed to eight, we sell 33,000 tickets. So basically, we know that we need to have some linear function that goes through these two points right here, 10, 27,000, and 8, 33,000. So based on that, we can just kind of use the, well, a couple different things we're gonna have to use, but we can fit these two points to some linear function that goes through those two points. So probably the easiest option to do there is gonna be to use the point slope form of a line. Well, the point slope form of a line tells us that some line would be given by the equation y minus y zero equals m times x minus x zero, where m is the slope and then x zero, y zero is some point that this linear function goes through. So obviously we have two points here, not a slope and a point. But what we can do is use these two points to figure out the slope and then use one of these two points in the point slope formula. So to do that, what we want to keep in mind is that the formula for slope of a line, slope of a linear function, knowing two points, is always going to be basically rise over run. Slope is just rise over run. Well, rise over run just means how much you change in the up direction, how much you change in the y direction, divided by how much you go over in the, the x direction, in the sideways direction. So in other words, how much our output increases, which is just going to be the difference between our second output minus our first output, divided by how much our input 
changes. So our second input minus our first input. So the slope of a line is just gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, in this case, that's just gonna be 33,000 minus 27,000 all over our second x value of eight minus our first x value of 10. So do be careful with this because it doesn't really matter which point you wanna call your first point and which point you wanna call your second point. However, it is very important that you keep in mind x2 has to be matched up with y2 and x1 has to be matched up with y1. So in this case, we used 33,000 as y2, which means we had to use 8 as x2. So these two points need to make sure to kind of line up with x2 and y2. And then same thing here. These two xy values, 10 and 27,000, had to line up with x1 and y1. If you don't you know, make sure that they match up with each other like that, your slope is going to end up being negative of what it should be. So in this case, we're going to do 33,000 minus 27,000, which would give us uh, 6,000 over 8 minus 10 is negative 2. So 6,000 divided by negative 2 would be negative 3,000. So basically the slope of our line, our m over here, is going to be negative 3,000. And then for x0 and y0, we can just pick one of these two points and put it in there. So let's go ahead and just go with our first point here. So we'll do 10 for x0 and 27,000 for y0. So then we can simplify this to figure out the equation of this line. So distribute the negative 3,000. Negative 3,000 times negative 10 would be plus 30,000. And then we can add 27,000 over, giving us y equals negative 3,000x plus 57,000. So this is going to be our demand function, which tells us the number of tickets we're going to sell depending on the price of our, um, our ticket. So one thing to kind of keep in mind here, it actually probably would make a little bit more sense instead of using X and Y here, instead to use Q equals negative 3000 P plus 57,000, because that way it is more clear that we have an equation that tells us the number of tickets we're going to sell depending on what the price of our ticket is. We always want to make sure that that is kind of what our demand uh, functions input and output represent. So now there is a part B to this question. We're not quite done yet. What we need to figure out now, knowing this demand function that we figured out here in part A, is what price should we make the tickets in order to maximize revenue? So that's kind of the point of this whole thing. The whole reason why we wanted to come up with a demand function was to figure out the maximum revenue. So first, let's just copy this demand function that we got in part A here. Negative 3000 P plus 50,000 okay. cap. So this is the quantity of tickets we're going to sell depending on the price of our tickets, right? So what we're trying to figure out here is what price of tickets we want to set to maximize revenue. So you want to be very careful there because what we're trying to maximize is revenue. We're not trying to maximize the number of tickets we sell. So this is not the function that we want to maximize because this is going to maximize how many tickets we sell, which may not necessarily lead to the most revenue. What we want to think about is what is our revenue equation? Well, in general, revenue is price times quantity. If you take the number of things you sell times the, the amount of dollars you sell each of them for, the price of each of those things, price times quantity will give you revenue. Your total revenue would just be number of things times price per thing would give you the total amount of money you get. So what we want to do actually is figure out our revenue equation depending on our price because price is the thing that we're trying to figure out. Well, if we already know that this quantity is given by this equation in terms of price, all we can do is say that revenue is going to be the price times the quantity, which we can, since we know Q is equal to all this, we can replace Q with this whole thing. So price times negative 3000 P plus 57,000. Because this equation inside the parentheses now should give us the number of tickets we sell. 
So now this equation tells us our total revenue only depending on the price per ticket. We only have one variable now. So now if we want to maximize this, all we would have to do is maximize this function, which basically just means find the critical numbers and figure out if it's a maximum or a minimum. So to find the critical numbers, we would just have to find the derivative of this function. So R prime would just be the derivative of this. Well, before we do that, what we actually probably should do is distribute this P in here, because what that's gonna give us is a function that's a little bit easier to find the derivative of. So if we multiply P by negative 3000 P, we get negative 3000 P squared, and then P times 57,000 would just be 57,000 P. So now this function here, we can take the derivative of just using the power rule. So the power rule just says we're gonna bring the, the power down in front, giving us negative 6,000. 3,000 times two is negative 6,000, or negative 3,000 times two. Keep our P and then lower our power by one. Two minus one is just one. So it's just negative 6,000 P. And then the derivative of 57,000 P, the P is just gonna fall off basically and we're just gonna get plus 57,000. So now to figure out where we may have a critical number, we would just wanna take this derivative of our revenue equation and um, just set it equal to zero. So setting this equal to zero, and then solving for P. So we'll minus 57,000 from both sides. And then divide by negative 6,000. Which just gives us P equals 57,000 divided by 6,000 would be 57 over six, which should simplify down a bit. Um, I should think that it would be 19 over two which would just give us 9.5. So basically $9.5 would be the optimal price that we would wanna set these tickets to, to maximize our revenue. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button, the bell icon, and turn on all notifications as well. This video actually came from one of my weekly live streams that I'm doing every Monday night. Be sure to subscribe so you're notified when I'm going live each week. And I hope to see you next Monday night.